Good morning to everyone in Western Canada and good afternoon to those of us who are joining us in Central and Eastern Canada. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Peter Paul. I'm the project leader at Allies, a joint project of Maitri and the McConnell Family Foundation that focuses on building capacity among employers to help them source, recruit, and retain skilled immigrant talent. We also work with a range of community organizations and immigrant employment councils to create conversations and foster connections between newcomers and employers. Today's 60-minute webinar focuses on sourcing immigrant talent in your local community. We are showcasing a very interesting and impactful practice from Ottawa, which I hope can be adapted and replicated in other cities as well. We're going to learn about how this collaborative project works. We're going to understand its structure. We're going to understand the impact that it's having for employers and for newcomers in the, in the Ottawa area. And we're also going to get some advice from the key players on the project on how it can be replicated in your respective city or region, as the case may be. We're really happy to be joined today by employers, community agencies, immigrant employment councils. We've got representatives from all three levels of government. We've also got a couple of crown corporations who have signed up for the webinar today. Uh, we're joined by participants from across the country representing seven provinces uh, across the country today. So we're truly reaching a wide audience and we're very happy that you could join us today. As with other higher immigrants webinars, uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be made available to those who are not able to join us today, but also we, we, can sh we will share it with you uh, if you'd like to review any particular part of the presentation at a later date or to share it with any of your colleagues and uh, fellow uh, workers in the sector later. So today we, we're, going to, uh, we're going to hear from Magdalene Kuman Maxwell, who is the Director of Employment Engage Employer Engagement at the Ottawa Job Match Network. Uh, which is hosted by Lassie World Skills in Ottawa. And she'll give us an overview of the Ottawa Job Match Network, uh, speak to some of the details of the program, how it works, and so on. And then we'll follow it up with a panel discussion where we'll be joined, where Magdalene will be joined by Kelly McGehee, who is the Senior Manager uh, of Stakeholder Relations at Higher Immigrant Ottawa, and also Jessica Tomlin, who is a Manager of Human Resources at the Canadian Bureau for international education, an employer who's uh, participated in this program and has benefited through that. And then we will also want to make sure that we leave plenty of time to, to answer your question in the, uh, at the end of the session. Uh, we'll, we will leave at least 15 minutes for that. So uh, let's uh, move straight ahead into the content of the presentation. Uh, Magdalene, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. OK, thank you so much, Paul. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to walk you through the Ottawa Job Match Network program. This is a specific program in Ottawa which is funded by the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities, and we have been in operation for the last six years. So it's a partnership program, and Lassie World Skills is the lead organization, but we are also formally partnered with the Community Immigrant Services Organization, OSISO, and the YMCA. Now, I just want to mention, although these are our three formal partners, this program is very well integrated into the community agencies in Ottawa, which serves immigrants. So we were talking about CISOC, the Chinese Community Center, the bridge training programs also funded by MCI um, for accounting and so on at Algonquin College, and with higher immigrants, Ottawa as well as a major stakeholder in delivering this program. What is the greatest asset? for the Ottawa Job Match Network. It is the pool of highly skilled internationally trained individuals in Ottawa who are job ready. And I think I might be safe in saying that we are perhaps the largest pool of screened candidates who are ready to meet with employers in Ottawa. And we are one stop shop to meet hiring needs of employers in Ottawa in that um, several years ago when this program started, the idea was to create one central spot in Ottawa where employers could come to for the hiring needs. So over the last six years, I think we can also say that we have been a dynamic response to labor market needs and supply between job seekers and employers. The OGMN client profile is quite interesting. 
we have for newcomers, um, we have probably about over 1,000 people right now in the database coming and going, and about 43% of these are male, 57 are female. The lowest level of education we have in this program is a college level, and that is just 6.2% of the population. The other is masters, um, and bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs. So you can see from those stats that we actually have a pool of very highly qualified individuals here. And interestingly as well, most of them have over six years of professional experience. Only 31% of our clientele has less than five years of experience. And having that professional experience from the home countries also makes them very marketable in Ottawa to employers. Who are those candidates? My pie chart, um, the colors might not be the best, but I just want to walk you through who we have in our database. So in the social and public sectors, people who could work in public sector or social services, we have about 22%. Business management, 12%. IT, 11%. Finance, 10%. Healthcare, education, science goes down to 8%. Accounting, engineering, admin, um, and culture, we're looking at also recreation. From that, you can see we have quite a wide variety of people who are coming into Ottawa on a daily basis, and it becomes very easy for us to find the kind of right fit for a particular job because it's such a diverse pool of candidates. So let's go back to the question, why OGMN? This program, as I said earlier on, was started about six years ago. And it works really well in partnership with a number of organizations, but very closely with High Immigrants Ottawa, because both of those programs are responding to labor market demand for skilled workers in Ottawa. In Ottawa, the statistics show that in the coming years, we'll be having about 10,000 Ottawa workers who could be retiring annually. And there is some statistics as well from SASCAN that shows that by 2025, Canada will face a skill labor force deficit of 1.2 million people, and that by 2031, immigrants will provide 100% of all net population growth. So in terms of, we, we are really responding to those changing demographics in Ottawa, and I don't think it's only for Ottawa. I think because of our work with employers, we are seeing very similar patterns right ac across the country. So what do we do for employers? So we really provide three basic services to employers. It's a very simple program. So first of all, it's an access to a database of over 1,000 skilled professionals with global experience and perspectives. We pre-screen the candidates, which means that they are job ready. And by that I mean we make sure that the language proficiency is okay, their the regime is ready, they are ready for an interview, and they also understand the competencies which the job requires from them. If they are hired, we also provide a post-recruitment support for hiring managers, supervisors, newly hired employees, and we also do some of that work in collaboration with HIO that also has a cross-cultural competency program going for employers. So sometimes employers may not always access us, but HIO has this program going um, monthly to meet the needs of employers as well. So how does our program work? Like I said, it's very simple, five, five steps. First, we receive job orders from employers. This happens on a regular routine basis. We scan our database to find who is ready for those jobs. We refer the pre-screened qualified candidates to the employers, and we leave it up to the employers to set interviews with the candidates and make the hiring decision. And if the candidates are hired, then we provide post-recruitment support. There are several benefits from hiring immigrants, and we hear this from our employer counterparts all the time. We've had extremely great success with many candidates who have become huge assets to the employers who have hired them. There's a better understanding of um, the diverse customer base. Things are changing in Ottawa. Now we see more immigrants using, um, so using employers for all kinds of things. Employers are able to tap into local markets and expand their customer base. There is more creativity, productivity, and decision-making through diverse approaches. They are able to 
broaden the talent pool for recruiting new employees, and they can actually attract top talent in the environment of labor shortages. Everyone that we're working with here are legally entitled to work in Canada. So for some employers, you don't have to go overseas. Many of these people are right here within our midst already. So just recently, we had a really interesting um, event with winners. So I also want to say that we are seeing increases in employers who are coming to us from regional um, spaces. So um, winners, actually, um, which is run by TGX in Canada, I asked them, why is it that they want to work with us? Because we had a really successful event, and they actually have hired two people for us in management positions. And from what they said, um, Aviv said, that they do want the opportunity to hire those new talents before they are scooped up by other employers. So they, too, are beginning to recognize the need for newcomer talent within the labor, labor um, force integration. I want to quickly walk through you through a couple of models that we are using in Ottawa. And this is a combination of Ottawa, um, Ottawa Job Match Network with Higher Immigrants Ottawa in terms of connecting newcomers to employment. The first one is networking opportunities. We host wonderful sessions with High Immigrants Ottawa every year and give newcomers the opportunity to meet with employers on a one-to-one -one basis. Through those expanded networks, we actually get a wonderful hiring results. We also have had another activity with Citizenship and Immigration Canada, looking at alternative careers for newcomers and earlier, in last, earlier this year, we had an amazing event with over 150 participants, employers and newcomers, all in a room looking at um, alternatives. And out of that, we actually got some hiring done as well. Job orders and targeted recruitment, this is ongoing, as I've mentioned before. We also have coaching events. Again, we work this with Higher Immigrants Ottawa, where the Higher Immigrants Ottawa working groups work with us. And every, we host about eight of them a year, where our clients get to meet one-on-one -on -one with an employer to talk about their potential. Corporate mentorship. TD Canada, with the Asian Leadership Network, we have a great program going on here in Ottawa. It's the first we piloted a few years ago, but now we are in the third round of mentorship. And we match some of our newcomers who are into business and who are interested in the banking sector with executives from TD. And not only that they get matched, but also other newcomers who don't have a mentee are now beginning to experience corporate training from TD staff in terms of helping them to understand the banking sector a little bit better. And there are employment results coming out of these. And the last couple of them is employer information events and sessions monthly. We have lots of employees now on board with us to try to give newcomers a perspective in terms of what's going on in their organization. So for newcomers, it's really important to get that perspective because then they can better tailor their resumes, their interview style to meet those employer needs. But for the employers in Ottawa as well, now that they're beginning to recognize there might be a shortage, this is an opportunity for them to connect with newcomers to see what, to see what kind of talent pool that we have. Internships. We've been very successful with the federal internship program for newcomers, and it has been amazing. Over 200 of our newcomers have gotten employment, but also with the Crown Corporations, EDC 2010, they did a really successful run with us with four internships for four newcomers. And to date, our program success is really good. Um, this year we had about 1,130 clients. The 617 are now employed in their fields or in related fields. And you can see some of the job titles here that our program only tries to promote people in commensurate employment or in field. So we are not looking for survival jobs, which makes the quality of the program a really high one in Ottawa. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. We'll be, um, I'll be passing it on to Peter now. Hey, thank, thank you, Michael. Thanks for that uh, comprehensive overview. Uh, I think you touched on all the important parts of the program, and I'm, so, I'm sure that uh, our participants will have some questions that we can get to towards the uh, end of the webinar. So thanks again, and uh, we we'll look forward to uh, more discussion uh, in the question and answer period as well. So we'll move on now to a poll uh, before we get to the panel discussion. And we, let's, let's ask our audience uh, this question. 
how do you recruit talent? How do you find talent? Uh, let's take a minute and, and have our uh, participants respond to this question, and then we'll go into the panel discussion, and we'll have our panelists uh, respond to the poll results as well. So let's take a minute and please uh, choose all the uh, channels that, that you typically use to find talent when you're looking for um, position. Seems like a lot of folks uh, seem to like the online job ads as a way to go. Informal referrals is another important way in which people find talent. Interesting, very interesting. Just a significant number of people who use immigrant employment agencies as well to find talent. Okay, very good. So we've seen the results of that, and, and now we'll, we'll, we'll talk to our panelists and we'll have them respond to it as well. So our, our first panelist uh, to, to join Magdalene, of course, is, is going to be um, Jessica Tomlin. Uh, Jessica Tomlin is the manager of HR at the Canadian Bureau of International Education. Uh, CBIE has seen an exponential growth uh, in their workforce over the last couple of years and has partnered effectively with the OJMN to find the right talent to meet their uh, recruitment needs. So welcome, Jessica, to the discussion. I'd also like to introduce Kelly. Uh, Kelly McGehee is the Senior Manager of Stakeholder Relations at Hire Immigrants Ottawa. Uh, Hire Immigrants Ottawa has been a key player in the region around collaborative immigrant employment practices and solutions in the Ottawa area. And has, uh, Hire Immigrants Ottawa is, of course, a very active partner with us at Allies as well. So. Welcome, Kelly. Kelly, let's start with you. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Hire Immigrants Ottawa and how they support employers in finding and managing skilled immigrant talent in the Ottawa region. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So, you know, Magdalene talked about the fact that we work uh, very closely. The Ottawa Job Match Network and Hire Immigrants Ottawa work closely together. And when we're talking about finding talent, Absolutely, the number one referral that we're making to employers is, in fact, to the Ottawa Job Match Network. Um, you know, for particular employers who have who have very specific needs, we might be looking at sector-specific bridge training programs, et cetera. As Magdalene mentioned, all of whom are likely working with OJMN in one way or another anyway. Um, but we're very, very constant in the caliber of the candidates and in the capacity of OJMN to meet the needs of employers. So if an employer gets in touch with us, and says that they're looking for talent, that's where we send them, right off the bat, is to Ottawa Job Match Network. And we also find that these opportunities to present coaching and networking events uh, in partnership with OJMN is a terrific opportunity for employers to be meeting directly with skilled immigrants in a very low-pressure sort of way. Um, so those are two uh, very, very uh, helpful ways for employers to be finding talent, if, if that's what their issue is. When it comes to managing immigrant talent. This is really where, where HIO steps in and, and this is what our mandate is all about, is really enhancing the capacity of employers to effectively integrate immigrants into their workplaces. Uh, similarly to Magdalene, we're really t talking about uh, skills commensurate, skills appropriate kinds of, kinds of positions here. Um, Hire Immigrants Ottawa offers, a, I think, a unique set of resources to help employers manage immigrant talent. We're a convener, so we gather employers together to identify and in some cases uh, create tools and resources that will support them. So just an example of that, HIO is facilitating our finance sector working group employers to work together to develop client service training for internationally trained individuals that are joining the finance sector. So that's building capacity of both those workplaces and of um, the immigrants themselves who will be entering those workplaces to succeed in those workplaces. We have a variety of tools that we've created over the years with input from our employers, including an employer's guide to integrating immigrants into the workplace. That's available online. All of our tools and resources are free uh, to employers. We're very grateful to, to have funding uh, from the provincial and federal governments to do this. Um, we also house an inventory of other resources from other organizations. So for example, uh, allies and hireimmigrants.ca have tremendous resources. We try and make sure that we've got links and access uh, to those. We do some, some very good in-house research here in Ottawa that is 
local. So if employers are looking for statistics and demographics and business drivers, we've got fact sheets on our website available to them. Uh, we're also developing a growing repository of case studies and success stories from employers here in Ottawa that will help other employers uh, to identify both business drivers and practical, actionable, promising practices that they can participate in. We're really happy to go out into workplaces and present to individual or, or groups of employers to provide them with high level uh, or more detailed introductions to the tools and resources that are available to them, to talk to them through some of the challenges that they may be facing, uh, both in accessing this group of talent, but again, more importantly, integrating, retaining, making sure that the skills of the immigrants who are coming into their workplaces are in fact being leveraged effectively. Uh, one of the, the big programming pieces that we offer is cultural competency training, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. Very good. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, I'd like to now turn to our employer from the Ottawa region. Jessica Tomlin is the manager of HR at the Canadian Bureau of International Education. So, uh, Jessica, how, how did you learn about the Ottawa Job Match Network and uh, what made you interested in the program? What were some of the early steps that you took to incorporate it in, into the, your strategy to, to source talent? Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say as well that it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, so just to give you um, a little bit of a sense of just simply in the recruitment area, what we've been facing at the Canadian Bureau for International Education, uh, as had been mentioned earlier, we have experienced uh, just exponential growth. Uh, so I came on board in 2011, and at that point we were at just about 50 employees, and this would be towards the end of that year, and we have now reached the mark of almost 100. Um, and we do continue to recruit at this point, so we obviously uh, um, uh, it's been uh, a big challenge, uh, that sort of that, that level of recruitment, and then also making sure that we sort of get the best qualified uh, individuals in the door. Uh, so around the time that I started, uh, we received an email blast from uh, the Ottawa Job Match Network, and it, this was part of their employer outreach initiative. Uh, and in this blast, we were invited to attend an informational session. Uh, though we weren't able to attend that session, uh, this was how my curiosity got piqued about the program. And I spent some time exploring uh, the website and just sort of learning what they, uh, what it is that they had to offer. I became quite intrigued. Um, I thought that I could see a really good match in creating a relationship between CBIE and the Ottawa Job Match Network, and um, I in turn reached out to them, uh, sort of asking about their process, and uh, and we've been working together ever since. Oh, that's wonderful. That's that's terrific, and, and I know it's been an active partnership and an ongoing one, and as you expand, it'll continue to be part of your strategy moving forward as well. Let, let's bring Magdalene back into this conversation. And, and, and Jessica just alluded to it, uh, Magdalene, but how else do you outreach to employers to promote the Ottawa Job, job Match Network in the Ottawa region? We do a variety of things, but I'll say um, something. A lot of it actually has been also spreading by word of mouth <laughs> from employer to employer. Higher Immigrants Ottawa is one of our major um, areas that we work with because the employers, they have all these round tables with employers. So we have been integrated into that service, and every month we meet with employers, so employers are always aware of what we are doing. So um, thanks to Hayu for that. The second thing is that, um, like Jessica mentioned earlier, we have an email blast that every once in a while we have an employer outreach officer, Andy Ripok, who actually reaches out to employers. Third way that we do that, we are online. We have a little online presence that people get in touch with us. We, uh, we advertise ourselves in the Ottawa Business um, Journal. Um, every quarter we've got an article coming there, and people are able to reach out to us from there as well. But also, we are scrutinizing employers and job boards all the time. So we try to figure out with our candidate profile which of those employers they would best fit. So Andy, I must give him a lot of credit for that. We actually call up employers regularly to find out and to talk about the program, to see if they're interested and if they're interested in um, meeting with us. We have meetings with them regularly, and we, sell, we market the program in that way. Okay, very good. Thank you. And I'm, I'm sure as in the Q&A as well, we'll be hearing from others who, who 
might have interesting ideas from their parts of uh, Canada as well. So uh, let's go back to Jessica. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in using the OJMN? You know, how was the process? You know, uh, give us a sense of the scope of how much you've used, how many hires were you able to make, uh, how are these folks doing in your company right now, and so on. Uh, it would be my pleasure. So again, I think uh, Magdalene and I are building a little bit on each other uh, because uh, when I look at the process, um, I have to say it is very simple. It's, uh, it's very easy, easy to follow, uh, easy to use. So I think for that, that's, uh, for us obviously that's a great benefit. Uh, but I think in terms of the other aspect, I'm going to um, give you a specific example from when I first started uh, working with the Ottawa Job Match Network uh, surrounding just an actual position that we had. Um, uh, so the CBIE has a big scope of, of, of sort of business functions underneath us, but one of the things that we do is manage scholarship programs. So we were looking for a program administrator who had strong English and Arabic speaking skills uh, and who also had experience working in the field of scholarship management. So it's not necessarily an easy, uh, easy criteria to, um, to meet. Um, I sent the job posting off by email uh, to the Ottawa Job Match Network and within a week uh, received a list of uh, six very qualified candidates with their CVs attached. We chose at that time to interview uh, three individuals. All three performed very well in the interview, uh, but we did select one uh, whom we went ahead and made an offer to. Uh, this individual was from Syria and had maybe a little bit of work experience here in Canada, but majority of her experience was abroad. Um, so she entered into the program administrator role and has been extremely successful in that position. Um, and we are grooming her at this point um, towards um, sort of the next level, which we call an academic manager. So she is very close to being ready for a managerial position. Uh, we have another candidate that was hired through that pro same process as well. So we, return we had another job opening for a program administrator, returned back um, to the group that had been recommended uh, to us through OJMN, and um, re-interviewed another individual who we brought on board. And this individual moved into a managerial role with about six months in to, be to working with us. Um, so as you can see, for us, it has worked really, really, really well. And, uh, and I do want to say that, uh, that both of the people that came on through that process um, have been very successful, very positive additions to uh, not only their roles alone, but also to our workforce in general. Um, so that's, uh, that's obviously been a big success. Very good. Thank you. Um, Kelly, you, you mentioned something about the, the uh, supports that you provide for employers, and one of that, of course, is the, is the cross-cultural competency training that HIO provides to employers. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and, and also about the impact of the program uh, on the uh, employers? Certainly. I'm happy to, Peter. Thank you very much. Um, HIO has uh, delivered some 72 sessions to almost 900 participants at this stage. So it, this is a really important program for us. And as I mentioned again, this is a, a program that is available free of charge to employers uh, in the Ottawa region. So it's a, it's a tremendous asset to organizations that are, again, looking to become more effective at integrating immigrants into their workplaces. One of the things we often hear from employers when we're first working with them is, oh, we've been hiring immigrants for ages. We have no issues with that. And then if you start to dig with them a little bit, they might recognize, you know what, maybe we're not leveraging their skills in the ways that we could be. Maybe we are running into challenges with, with um, team leadership in terms of managing effectively uh, across cultures in our organization. And this is where the cultural competency training can be so helpful to them. We offer a suite of six different sessions. These are very interactive sessions. So they're, they're based on case studies. Um, one of the things that we hear often from uh, employers who are participating in these is that, in fact, they're incredibly enjoyable, they're fun, and they really feel like they're learning more than they might in a more theoretical setting because they're actually particip participating in the training. Um, so they're, they're uh, very, very effective that way. If an individual uh, takes 
four of these sessions, they get a certificate. So this is also professional development, which is one of the things that I know that many of our participants really appreciate about the training. I'll tell you a little bit, you've got the headers in front of you there, a little bit about each of these. Uh, the introduction, that's self-explanatory. Self I think this is really a sort of foundational piece for the training. Uh, then we move into the intercultural problem solving. And in this session, we look at developing strategies uh, to identify and address communication style differences, which of course is so important uh, in workplaces, learning when and how to address nonverbal issues of concern, uh, etc. In the effective cultural adaptation strategies session, uh, we focus on exploring the adaptation process and the strategies that make it successful. And this is an opportunity for participants uh, to take a self-assessment tool that uh, not only identifies one's personal areas of strength and challenge in adaptation, but also provides action plans for addressing areas of challenge. The performance management and feedback is, in some ways, I think, one of our most important uh, sessions. This is, this is a topic that many, many organizations struggle with anyway. Add culture on top of that, and it becomes a real challenge. So the performance management and feedback uh, session is one that, that people appreciate so much. In this session, we explore effective communication techniques for providing internationally educated professionals with day-to-day, -day, um, as well as performance evaluation feedback. And we use information on perceptual differences and communication styles and cultural conditioning to explore the effectiveness of our current feedback styles and to address potential adjustments to those styles. So again, there's a lot of impact coming from this particular session. Uh, the fifth session that we offer, and people can take these, they don't have to take them in order. We, we encourage the introduction first, but people can come in and out of these uh, in terms of, of the order that they're taking them. In the workplace that accommodates effectively, we're exploring uh, keys to successful accommodation strategies, focusing on the relationship between cultural integration and accommodation, accommodating different cultural norms. Uh, and, and reasonable practices in accommodation, looking at systemic inclusion and accommodation. And this session includes conversation with a new Canadian. So a new Canadian comes as a kind of guest speaker panelist uh, regarding their perspective on accommodation in the workplace. And then the final session is dimensions of inclusiveness. And this is where we actually have a full panel of new Canadians in a very interactive session uh, focused on creating dialogue among new internationally trained individuals and uh, and current teams in, in our workplaces. So the, this is a training session that helps us to more effectively do that in our own workplaces. We explore how to learn and create uh, inclusiveness dimensions of multicultural workplaces, including entering your work culture, workplace orientation topics for ITEIs. We know that orientation is key to successful integration, clarifying unwritten rules, uh, mentoring made easy and inclusiveness strategy, how to create a learning session for current staff. So these are, these are sort of very high level sort of descriptors of what these sessions are about. But once again, we know that, uh, that for many of our employers, taking one of these sessions is really the start of a journey for them to enhancing the capacity of their entire workplace around cultural competency training. So we know that this is something that is incredibly important and effective uh, for the employers with whom we're working here in Ottawa. Yeah. Anybody I, can find out more on, go and look at the website and uh, and see when the next ones are coming up if you're in the area. Wonderful. And, and uh, I understand my colleague Bonnie has uh, typed in a link in the chat box so that uh, you can access uh, in more information about uh, this training. Thank you, Kelly. That, that was wonderful, uh, really well organized and, and laid out and very comprehensive as well. Uh, I just want to turn back to, to Jessica to, to get your sense, now, now that you've had this partnership, with the Ottawa Job Match Network and with Hire Immigrants Ottawa. Can you speak to the overall benefit that your company has accrued as a, par as a, as a consequence of this partnership? Yes, absolutely I can. Uh, so I think I would have to say that the main benefit uh, that we've seen so far is bringing in really qualified individuals. Um, and we know sort of with the, the, the changing demographic 
trends um, that immigrants are going to be playing, as, as Magdalene had pointed out, playing a larger and larger role within our workforce. Uh, so having that access through this network has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and the other portion of it is that we also know for those, Canadian, for those uh, newly arrived individuals who do not have that much work experience yet within Canada, that they get very well trained for the environment through the, the, through the program. Uh, so as I'd mentioned with sort of my case between the other two, um, or with the two that, that, uh, that I had discussed, we've had very little issues in terms of, of looking at integrating into the workforce, because they were very well prepared, um, and then as were we as well. So it, uh, it, it, it ends up being a great partnership. Um, I think one of the other benefits for us has been that, um, that we've also ended up working a lot less with sort of the more traditional uh, staffing agencies, and as we are a nonprofit, um, this is obviously a benefit to us when we look at some cost reductions. Um, and it's also it's very nice to support because we know that the Ottawa Job Match Network is, is truly working towards uh, creating a relationship between the employer and the employee uh, for one that is you know geared for success and for long term uh, you know for, for long term uh, lasting positive results. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. We're, we're coming towards the end of our uh, panel discussion, but I, I want to ask one question uh, to all three of you, and, and maybe we'll start with Magdalene on this, given that uh, uh, many, in, many of the participants in this webinar come from um, cities and regions outside of Ottawa and may be interested in adapting this model or this idea uh, to their respective city if, if it currently doesn't exist there, um, what would be some tips that you would give them uh, on how we can create something like this in their region? What would be tips on, that you've learned from the Ottawa Job Match Network? Okay, first very important tip, it's really important to get a centralized um, something going. So I think, because this has really worked for us in Ottawa, that uh, most of the community organizations and agencies are connected to us so that when one job posting goes out, it touches almost every agency and almost every newcomer that somehow um, registered through them and through us. So developing partnerships is very key. Um, secondly, it has to be um, coordinated really well because you don't want employees to get overwhelmed with everyone trying to get in touch with them. This is one of the issues that we had very early on, and this was something that um, between HIU and us and other agencies, we had to kind of decide who the main point of contact is with some of some employers because some things it's not, it's not a good idea to keep on um, bombarding employers with all with the same services. So coordination is important as one tip, and the second tip is partnership. Okay. My two tips. <laughs> Very good. Uh, thank you. And, and Kelly, uh, from, from your perspective, uh, what, what could you add to that? How could we make this more effective? So making it more effective, Peter, are you talking about for employers who are, who are sourcing and hiring or, or expanding to other communities? Yeah, for, I think for other communities, maybe Jessica could speak to how, how we could make it more effective for employers. Sure. So for expanding for other communities, I mean, I would really just, just echo what Magdalene said. I think that uh, developing partners and developing champions is key. There has to be a need in the community. There has to be an identified uh, appreciation from employers that this is something that actually they want to work on because it does take coordination. It does take time. It does take developing the actual drivers in that community. And the business drivers are different in every community and, in fact, for every employer. So I think you do need a convener. I think you need a champion. And you need a few um, very strong employers to come on board right at the beginning and say, yeah, we're going to take some leadership around this issue. I think it's imperative that you have uh, the employer leadership if you're going to try to build this kind of an initiative in your own community. Okay, very good. Thank you, Kelly. And, and Jessica, from the employer perspective, um, what may be two tips that you would have to a local initiative so that it's more effective for the end user, that's the employer? I will definitely echo what uh, what Magdalene had to say as well, which is making sure that it's a well-coordinated communication effort. I think for those of us who do work in in, in HR, who are uh, very active in recruitment, uh, we do know we can get inundated with um, messages and telephone messages and email blasts from 
uh, from staffing agencies. So I think it becomes important also with the messaging um, to also sort of be clear as to as to who you are and what your mandate is right off the bat. Because I know that for me, that's what worked. I as soon as I saw the email blast and looked at it, I knew that this was something that was set aside a little bit, you know, from from the traditional agencies, and that's what appealed to me. Um, so I would definitely suggest uh, that. And again, uh, employ employer education. So once you sort of once you get them in the door, um, ensuring or you get them on board to your program, just ensuring they are aware of of how positive that this can be for them, um, for the you know, for their clients, depending on on what their services are, uh, because many times their clients as well are are. Uh, new arrivals to Canada who will benefit from that that international aspect. Uh, so I think those would be my two tips. Okay. Thank you very much uh, to, to all our panelists. Uh, we appreciate your time and expertise on this. I just want to also point out that, you know, as we've noted, this is, we've highlighted in this webinar, the Ottawa region's employers um, and local immigrant uh, talent agencies that have come together to work uh, in this collaborative model. However, uh, there are similar initiatives uh, in in other cities as well. As a matter of fact, as the map shows, we, we you know there are ways in which employers can connect with immigrant employment councils, agencies across the country. We've got uh, some listed on the map, but we've also got a uh, an attachment that that you could download that will help you identify uh, some of the talent uh, available in in your respective city. So uh, as you can see, and, and we will make this uh, presentation available online as well so that you can look at the downloadable list uh, that we'll have up there as well. So we'll, we'll now move to our Q&A session. Uh, and just to kick things off, let, let me start with a question to, to, um, to, to Magdalene. Um, immigrant employees face some challenges in terms of their English language skills, perhaps, and Canadian workplace culture and fit. Uh, how do you assess this when determining uh, how job, how candidates are job ready for the prospective employer? The first step is for our program, every candidate needs to have a language assessment with the Canadian language benchmark. And um, they do this through our Newcomer Information Centre here in Ottawa, and we receive the results of this. The minimum, um, the minimum level is level seven. And level seven in reading, writing, speaking, and listening have been kind of proven through the bridge training programs that the ministry runs as well, that it's a good entry point into work because we are recruiting for people who are um, language ready for safety, to be able to do the practice well, communicate effectively at work. So that's one of the first things that we screen out. The second thing is that we work with pre-employment programs as well um, that are funded by Citizenship and Immigration Canada, um, the United Way, other programs, where those candidates have already done quite an intensive training in terms of adaptation to Canada. So by the time they get to the Ottawa Job Match Network, they have kind of a good resume. They know what they're looking for. They have clearly identified goals. They are interview ready. And we do a further assessment to make sure that they are matching with the kind of job that we are actually recruiting for. So we do address a lot of that. OK, very good. Thank you, Magdalene. B before we go into uh, some of the other questions that are being asked, uh, let's just ha ha uh, take a quick poll to see uh, if, if you would be willing to pay for recruitment services such as the one we just heard about, uh, let's just take a minute and please respond to it. So let's see uh, if, if folks are willing to pay for recruitment services such as the, G the Ottawa Jobs and the Match Network. Okay, the answers are coming in. It seems like most people might not be willing to pay for it yet. Um, seems like three out of four would not be willing to pay for it yet. 
Well, that's interesting. Let's let's go on with our Q and A, and maybe our panelists uh, can can jump in as well and and respond later. But one of the questions is: Are employers able to access the database of the OJMN directly? Magdalene? No, no. <laughs> it has to come through us. We have to receive a job posting or um, some kind of requirements. We need to know what the employee are looking for, and then we give the, them the best the best to matches out of this. Uh, from the employer perspective, I'd like to add to that. There's a big benefit to that because what we every time that I have sent in a job posting, the list of candidates that I get are they're pre-screened. So in some ways, the work is done for me. I'm already looking at a very strong qualified pool. Yeah, and that's the advantage of using our services. In most of the cases, um, we do get quite a, no a high number, maybe up you know, of candidates who will be called in for an interview or who eventually get hired because we take the time for the screening process. Okay, very good. We have, we have another question as well. What percentage, percentage of applicants from the OGMN are screened out initially? Are they eventually successful? And what does this say about the scalability of the program? Yes, we do have some that are screened out. I'm actually looking at some statistics right now. And over the last three years, out of 1,769 um, people who have made it to the program, maybe we've had about 350 who have not actually, at that point, initially made it to the pool. And they have sometimes not made it to the pool because we have felt that the interview skills are not quite ready yet or they still need to do more work on some of the competencies they need for the job. But they do. We give them the opportunity to keep working with the counselors, to pr connect them with more resources, and eventually after six months they can come back to the program and then we can reassess again. So we have a, th a six-month reassessment period. Okay. Very good. Uh, a question for Jessica. Um, how do the services of the OJMN compare to traditional recruitment firms and services that you may have used in the past? Um, it's simpler. I find it. I find it simpler, uh, and I think that may it may simply be that the motives are different. So, in terms of when we're looking at the, at the very traditional staffing agencies, the motives really are very profit driven. Whereas, and there's nothing wrong with that, and they serve a very good purpose. Um, but for what I'm looking for in terms of with the the Ottawa Job Match Network, it's just it's a very it's a very personal. Uh, exchange, and I also I, I always have the full confidence in the candidates that are being put forward. So I mean, those are the, those are that for me, that's how it works. Yeah, and, and I also understand there's also the post hiring support that you receive. Absolutely, and yeah, absolutely. Okay. Good. Um, please, please do f uh, feel free to type in your questions, uh, and and we certainly will have a chance. Uh, to answer them. Um, may, maybe Kelly, you can you can uh, take a crack at this. What, what's the advantage of recruiting uh, newcomers through these services versus recruiting them from overseas or hiring temporary foreign workers? Sure. Well, I think that you know the first advantage is that they're here, so <laughs> you have an opportunity to actually meet them uh, before going through the process. Uh, so. And also, frankly, we know that for some of our employers, um, they actually, although they're very interested in finding the best talent that they can actually find, they also appreciate if they're uh, finding talent that is already in the community, they get the fact that this is also enhancing their own community. So this is contributing to the economy of the community in which they're working. So that's an added benefit for them. But I would say the first benefit is that, that opportunity to meet people face to face. They're here, they're available. Um, if they've gone through the OJMN screening process, then we know that they've got the qualifications. We know that they're job ready. And so I think employers appreciate, as Jessica talked about, the simplicity of the process. It's much less complicated to hire someone who is in your community uh, than to, to source someone from overseas. We recognize that there are, are cases where we're not going to find the talent that we're looking for here. But if it's here and if it's available, why would you not go this route first? I would agree, Kelly. It's all those things from, from my perspective. It's all those things mapped together. And the social component does matter for many organizations. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I do want to give some credit here to the funder of the um, MCI, um, the provincial government, for recognizing some of the barriers that newcomers face and actually being able to make services like ours at a very low cost, in some cases no cost, to employers so that we can um, really enhance the economic integration of newcomers because we know that in the past many of them have not been able to get through employment and it's simply because there were quite a few barriers that they have faced. We have seen an increase in the uptake of employers with our program over the last um, three years especially. And um, we are happy to see that so many of the, these newcomers now, there is a channel for them to be able to make a connection with an employer and to increase their own network as well. So kudos to the provincial government for being able to recognize um, that need and having community agencies like ours be able to be that channel for newcomers to employment. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. So th there's also a question um, um, about is OJMN incorporated a and what is your staffing complement? Okay, so in OGMN by itself is not incorporated. Lassie World Skills is incorporated, and Lassie World Skills is the lead agency that is leading this program. And the staffing complement, we have four job match specialists. There are two located at Lassie World Skills, one at the YMC, one at the um, OSISO, because they, all those three organizations run pre-employment programs. And we've got um, administrative staff and an employment outreach coordinator and myself. But remember that we are the exit strategy. So uh, part of the service that we provide, there are other staff within each of those organizations that are also contributing towards the development of the newcomer in terms of skills acquisition. OK. Uh, th there's also a question about how are the education credentials verified against Canadian standards? Um, well, many of our clients, I'd probably say about 70% of them, by the time they come to us, they've already done the WES equivalency. So we know that um, the, the credentials have already been assessed. Okay. So if, Peter, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm going to leap in there uh, just from the employer perspective because one of the things that we've discovered working with a variety of employers is that they have decided to take the credentials as bona fide. Um, and particularly larger employers often have processes in place to test competencies, um, mm -hmm. but they have found actually, and this is anecdotal, that they've been very successful at just, uh, at just accepting those credentials. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, very good. Thank you. We also have a question which reads, what proportion of the employers who use the OJMN would be part of the nonprofit sector as opposed to the commercial or for-profit sector? Okay, this is probably going to require a little bit more analysis. Actually, the commercial sector is probably where we have um, the most hiring happen and the government. The non-for-profit sector is very easy to identify with the kind of work that we do. So I can't give you quite a percentage now because I just don't have it in front of me. But yeah. we have a combination of employers between private sector, large employers, small employers, medium-sized employers the government being the largest employer that we have, which is also kind of what it is in Ottawa in terms of government being the large employer. So it's quite a combination. And also to keep in mind for us that it, so long it's an employer, it's, what we want is to get each individual hired in a job that's commensurate to their um, field. So you might find just one candidate has only been hired by one employer, but that's okay so because you're trying to find a match to each for each individual person. Right, right. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a question with regard to funding, and, and this uh, is, is within the province of Ontario, but you mentioned uh, the Ottawa, J, uh, the OJMN is currently funded through the province of Ontario, through MTCU. Uh, is this through the Employment Ontario envelope or is or a labor market partnership agreement? It's the, yeah, it's through the bridge training programs. Through the bridge, okay. Mm -hmm. we, we also have uh, a question uh, <clears throat> about francophone immigrants. Uh, has there been a focus put on francophone immigrants and, uh, and bilingual talent? And do you offer bilingual services? Yes, we do offer bilingual services. We offer a limited amount of only francophone services. It's because we don't have the capacity right now to do it as much as um, we would like to do it. But all bilingual clients um, they can access our services. And we do run programs only for francophone clients, um, maybe three times a year, in terms of more advanced job readiness. 
and we are currently working with CISOC, which is another community agency, in terms of growing our employer engagement with the Francophone community. So we are at the very early stages of this, and I hope that the Francophone presence can continue to grow in Ottawa, because it's actually becoming a growing need here. Okay, very good. We also have a question about the cross-cultural competency workshops from HIO. Uh, are they offered for free, or is there a cost associated to the training? They're offered for free, and once again, kudos to our funders for that. And, and again, that's the province and the federal government um, who recognize that, in fact, uh, I think employers can really benefit from this support in terms of the capacity of their workplaces. So the sessions are all for free. Okay, very good. Okay, I think we're, we're coming to the end. I just have one one more question. Um, on on how do you how do you persuade your management? Uh, to, to try the OJMN, so how do you, Jessica, how did you try to you get your senior leadership to buy into this idea of using OJMN? Um, I have to be honest with you. I got uh, I got allowed to be able to uh, to do it or the permission to go with it because uh, there was no cost involved initially. Okay. So I mean that's sort of what opened the door for us. Uh, but at this point, given the given the successes, I mean I think we would likely be willing to pay uh, to pay a fee for it. Um, but yeah, that was, I mean, that was the entrance. And again, keep in mind, I'm speaking from one, um, right. one sector's perspective from the, from the nonprofit where our recruitment budget is a little limited. No, I understand. And, and maybe Kelly and, and Magdalene, you could, you could respond. What, what do you hear from other employers? What's their most important uh, selling point to the senior leadership so that they can actually participate in the program? It's the quickness of the service. It's being able to get pre-screened people who are job ready and ready, for, ready to be interviewed. And also the second part of it, it's many employers are actually looking to increase the diversity um, pool at work. And that's it. It's just fast. It's easy. It's not complicated. And, and I would concur with that. I think the employers that we're working with um, may, may become attached initially to the, the idea of this organization because they're looking to, as Magdalene says, increase the diversity of their organizations just to um, enhance their productivity, enhance their creativity, maybe grow markets, uh, both internationally and locally. Once they use the service, and again, they're introduced to the caliber of, of the clients and to the efficiency uh, of, the, of the program, they're sold there. Yeah, I would concur with all that, absolutely. Okay. Okay, I think there's a little, just a quick note here. I'm just seeing a little note here. If I mention that the OGMN is funded by MTCU, sorry, that's a mis, um, it's MCI, it's the Ministry of Citizenship and Immigration. It's um, provincial. It's not MTCU. Okay. Very okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think we, we should, uh, you know, we, we've uh, put the local resources uh, uh, document up there, so you could certainly click on that and download it uh, so that you, you know, in your respective region, you could identify uh, who could be a resource to you as an employer, uh, similar to what we heard about here in Ottawa. And certainly, you know, there are ways in which these efforts are being coordinated in multiple cities at this time. Um, so I, I think we, we, we've come to the end of our webinar today. I want to really thank the audience, um, and especially our presenter, Magdalene Kuman maxwell uh, uh, Kelly McGahey, and Jessica, for providing us a really a wealth of information about this program uh, and, and telling us about the details and being open and frank with us about how it works and uh, helping us actually get some tips and some ideas uh, to help scale up our existing programs in our respective cities or to help create something new. Uh, so thank you so much. And, and Jessica, as an employer, I know you, you've got your hands full, especially the spirit of growth. And thank you for taking the time to, to join us here today as well. My pleasure. In, in, in thank you, Peter. Oh, thank you. It's, it's our pleasure. Uh, in addition to uh, this webinar, of course, Hire Immigrants has a, a host of other resources available to all our participants. We've recently put up some success stories uh, that address this issue, issue of uh, sourcing talent. We've got a very recent uh, success story from St. Michael's Hospital here where they use uh, the Career Bridge internship program as a way to source uh, internationally trained um, uh, professionals. Uh, we've also got another story from another healthcare provider, Mount Sinai, here in Toronto, that, that uh, partners with a bridge training program to source internationally trained nurses. Uh, but we also have an interesting story from out west, from the city of Calgary,
that has hosted uh, employment forums that bring together city staff and job seekers uh, for a kind of one-stop shop. So there are a wealth of resources on our website. Uh, please do do log on and, and uh, browse through it. And all, when you're there, please sign up for our e-tips so, so that you are uh, kept in the loop about upcoming events and uh, notices and new, new content as it, as it develops as well. Uh, finally, please take a moment uh, to fill out our survey and tell us what you thought of this webinar, what was useful, how could we do this better. Um, and thank you very much again to our participants and uh, especially to our presenters. We hope to see you again at the next webinar. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Bye-bye.